Yeah, yeah get into, get into it. it. Okay, this is the fifth time I'm filming this and I don't care if it goes bad because I've Okay, let's go. As you can tell by the title of this video, today I am going to be talking about my freshman year at Purdue's CS program. That sounded really weird. What I meant was my experience as a CS major at Purdue freshman year. This video is going to be broken up into five parts. First is what classes you take your freshman year. The next is how to get good grades. And then the third part is extracurriculars followed by networking and finally housing. Okay, let's go. Okay, number one, what courses do you take in your freshman year at Purdue CS? In your first semester, you're going to be taking three CS related courses. The first one is CS 180, which they've named Programming 1. It used to be called something different. I don't know. This is an intro CS course that teaches you like fundamentals of programming. This is taught in Java. Some things you learn are like loops, arrays, array lists, linked lists. This is a four credit class. So we meet for lectures three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And in addition to that, there's one day where you have to go to lab. During labs, you have lab assignments and you have to complete them for a grade. And when I took CS 180, there were two midterm exams and one final. Midterms were live coding. Final was multiple choice. Difficulty, I would rate it a four or a five out of 10. It was not very difficult. It was all right. The second course you'll be taking in your first semester is CS191. It's a freshman seminar for CS majors. I think also data science majors. This is taught by your academic advisor or any CS advisor. It teaches you things like ethics, like finding yourself. You also do like some personality tests. Anyway, I found the class pretty useful and I feel like a lot of people need that. So this is a one credit class, so it only meets once a week. Oh, another really useful thing about CS 181 is that you map out your plan of study for your next four years. So that's really helpful. It kind of gets your life on track. Yeah. My difficulty rating, 0 out of 10. Not difficult, just show up, do your work, not that hard. You got this. Your third CS course in your first semester is CS193. This is called Tools. It's a freshman class where you learn some CS skills that aren't programming. Like, you learn how to use Vim. You learn terminal commands, stuff like that. Those are actually useful things that you should learn. This is not a hard class. Um, it's a one credit class, so you meet once a week. There are like four or five homework assignments. They're not hard. As long as you do them, like you'll pass the class. You'll get an A probably. This class is taught by undergrad TAs. So like it's pretty chill. Along with like the one lecture a week, you also have one PSO. PSO stands for practice study observation. For CS 193, PSOs are where you can ask for homework help. They're optional. So I never went, but you should go. My difficulty rating, one out of 10. Not hard. Do your work and you'll be fine. Okay, now moving on to second semester of your freshman year, which I just finished. Yay! First class you'll be taking is CS 182, aka Foundations of Computer Science, or just discrete math. It's just discrete math. Honestly, this class is really hard for me. You see my legs? Oh, you can see my legs. Oh, that's better. Okay. Camera angle change. Okay, as I was saying about CS 182, okay, it'll feel like it's useless, but I think it's actually useful later on, so just pay attention. Although the content can be kind of confusing at first if you don't know anything beforehand like me. Um, it's a three credit class, so lectures three times a week. When I took it, my lectures were at 8.30 in the morning, so I didn't really go, but I did watch lectures online. And then everything moved online, so I guess I was just ahead of the game. Along with lectures, there's also one PSO. This is where you can ask questions on things you don't understand in lecture. These are also optional, but they're they're really useful. They're led by TAs and they do practice problems, which I found useful. For difficulty rating, I'd rate it a 10. It was really hard for me. Might not be hard for you. Moving on. CS240 is the next course you'll be taking in your second semester. This course is called Programming in C. In this course, 
you will program in C. So C is a lot of low-level programming stuff, so it can get really confusing really fast, but just pay attention in lecture, do some studying outside of class, um, and you can probably understand the material. The homeworks can be a little bit tedious to do. This is another three credit class, but there's only two lectures a week, along with one lab section. Now, 240 labs are not like 180 labs. 240 labs, we do not have any lab assignments. 240 labs are just a place where you can ask questions about the homework. I went to lab every week, but I was always like one of three or four people who went to lab. And I never understood why people didn't go because it's a great place to ask for help. Because when you go to office hours, it could be like super crowded, but like lab sections, there's almost no one there. And the capacity is like 21 people. So you'll probably always get be able to get the help you need. Yeah, go to lab. There's only one homework per week, but as I said, could get confusing, so go to lab. What's good about the class? You learn a lot of low-level stuff, which as I said, can be confusing, but you know, as they say, once you know C, you know it all. Um, difficulty, I rate it 8 out of 10. Stress level, 10. On to part 2 of this video. How to get good grades in your classes. So, Purdue offers a lot of guidance in helping you succeed. Um, one of those things is the USB help room. USB stands for Undergraduate Student Board. Undergraduate Student Board is basically their TAs who help you. They have they hold a help room, I think, almost every day of the week, and you just you can just go in there, ask questions. I went there almost every day when I took CS180. Really helpful. They helped me with my homework. Second thing you can do: go to office hours. Um, ask your professor questions. I never did, but I did ask TAs questions. I was just too scared of the professors. Office hours are helpful. Part three, extracurriculars. So there are lots of CS clubs on campus. A few of them include AMCS, which is the Association of Multicultural Computer Scientists. Um, there's Purdue Hackers. There's um, a bunch of clubs. I can't remember all of them. There's also CS Women's Network, which I was a part of. So I'll just speak a little bit on that. So CSWN, CS Women's Network, offers a lot of opportunities to girls in the club and it's a good way to meet girls who are in CS. I think I talked to Bloomberg like three times in total. There was like an event called Billards with Bloomberg. We played pool with Bloomberg recruiters. The next day they had a resume review event and I went and they actually remembered me. So you should definitely go if you want to network, talk to people. It's a really good way to get out there. Which leads me to the fourth part of this video, networking. So as I said, clubs, they give you a lot of opportunities to go and talk to companies and stuff. And the school also offers the same thing. A lot of companies come to Lawson, which is Purdue CS building, and recruiters will come to Purdue and you can talk to them, kind of ask them questions, whatever you want, give them your resume, maybe, if they ask for that. And these opportunities, you get alerted through email, so check your email always. Oh, one more thing I forgot to add about extracurriculars are hackathons. CS people love hackathons. For who has a few, but the two I can think of, Hello World and Boilermake. Hello World is a hackathon hosted by Purdue, and it's for freshmen only. So if you can, you should go. I didn't go to Hello World because that weekend I was studying for my calc exam, so I didn't go. <laughs> Hackathons are a good way to meet new people. They're a good way to socialize, to learn coding, um, try something new that you don't usually do. The second hackathon I can think of is Boilermake. I actually went to that one. That was my first college hackathon. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. There was lots of good food. Um, nice people. I made some new friends. Last part of this video, housing. If you didn't know, Purdue has something called learning communities. Learning communities are spaces where you live with the people who are studying the same major as you. So there are a lot of different LCs. There's engineering, there's women in science, there's CS, a lot of other ones that I don't know. I was in the CS LC and that was in Earhart Hall. So I got a pretty good dorm. I'd say if you can, you should apply for the CS LC. They host a lot of events, like um, they sponsored a trip to the corn maze. I thought that was really fun, my first corn maze. It was completely paid for. During first semester, they host study sessions, like the night or two nights before the CS180 exams. They just meet in the Earhart lobby. They give 
free dinner, which was my favorite part. So there was always like free Papa John's, free insomnia cookies. Study session wasn't really much of a study session, low key a mess. For me, LCs were super helpful because they allowed me to like get to know people in my major. There is a disadvantage to living in an LC. Like if you don't actively branch out, then like you could feel restricted to people only in your major. So to branch out, you can like talk to people, talk to random people you meet on the street. Um, go do some non CS extra cookers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comment them below. I read all of the comments. I will reply to all of your questions, maybe in a later video, maybe in the comment section. If you've made it this far, please comment helicopter down below. Bye, see you in the next video. Gross, okay.